My name is Casey Hirsch. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, author, and founder of LightYourSparkle.life. Today, I have a very special guest, Fumiko Takatsu. She is the founder and CEO of The Face Yoga Method, a revolutionary pro-aging method. Fumiko is helping thousands of men and women worldwide to regain their confidence through a 100% natural alternative to cosmetic procedures. The face yoga method has over 80 facial exercises that target every area of the face, meeting everybody's unique needs. As many of you know, I have an autoimmune disease called Crohn's disease, and I've struggled with chronic illness for many years. I focus on integrative and alternative treatments, and I also try to avoid invasive procedures and chemicals. I want to feel empowered over the aging process rather than a victim of it. Fumiko's method represents my philosophy that the best anti-aging approaches are individualized, risk-free, and address the physical and emotional aspects of health. Hello, Fumiko. Hi, Casey. Thank you so much for having me here. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited. I have been looking at your material for several years now and starting to use the method, and I'm just excited to talk to you a bit more about it. Oh, thank you. I'm so honored. Yay. So can you explain to us why you developed the face yoga method and why you describe it as a revolutionary pro-aging method? Okay. Well, I'm originally from Japan, born and raised and educated in Japan. And then when I was 36 years old, vacationing in California, I got in a car accident and it was near fatal. And I still remember everything vividly. I was in a passenger seat and yellow Mustang came side of the, our car and slow motion. And I knew all oh, the car is going to hit us. And it, psh, sure enough, like our car started spinning three and a half times and I stopped. And then I could not breathe. I saw smoke starting coming out. I was in the ambulance instantly and ER. And I was told that I was so lucky that I didn't kill right there on the spot. And um, the trauma of the car accident, however, left my body and a face out of alignment because I was hit from this way, right? So my body was this. And I still get a little bit of trauma. When I see a car coming from the right side, I freeze. It's getting better. But that was 17 years ago. So I'm going to, I'm going to be 53 this year. And 36, you know, mid-30s, also I started seeing a sign of aging. And I was so into getting tan. So I was putting a suntan lotion and baking myself under the sun. And one day I felt like, whoa, my face is so out of alignment because of the car accident. I could not really talk or chew. I was almost like, it was strange. I was trying to talk, but I could not really smile the same way. And I remember people stared at me, my mouth area, like, oh. You know, not my eyes, like they're looking at my mouth area. And I wanted to do something, of course. And then that aging, I started seeing a sign of aging. So the first thing is, of course, like, oh, I have to get a facial. I have to buy all the expensive things. So I did. I didn't do any procedures, but I felt almost like a trapped because I have so much energy inside, but it didn't show my face. And I remember people often ask me, are you tired? I said, no, I'm not tired. But that's how I represented myself. And I didn't like the way I felt because almost like a separation from my body inside how I felt and the face because they're not connected because the way I was feeling different from how I looked. So one day I just thinking about how I had to deal with my aging and then it hit me hard. Wait a minute, the face is a muscle, just like a body. And I've been fit because I've been doing yoga since I was 10. So the more, my body was very fit. And then when I started thinking about all the facial muscles, I thought, how about if I train my face muscles and then I can get the desired look. And that's how I started. And at the time I was teaching at the university in Japan. So my job was pretty good. But when I started doing all the exercises, I created all the poses for myself. I started feeling different. Like I felt so good. And then my parents um, even started seeing some changes. And I remember my mom said, did you do something on your face? Because I wasn't living with my parents at the time. I said, no, 
like, you look different. Like, yeah, mom, I'm doing this exercise. She didn't believe at first. And my friends started noticing. And then they asked me to teach them. So that's how I started. I wrote the book and just for fun at first, because I wasn't really planning to make it as a career. But people started asking me. And when I showed them poses, they started seeing the differences on the face, but also they started feeling different inside. And I quit my job teaching at the university and I decided to pursue this, you know, face yoga journey. And that was, yeah, that was the beginning of my journey with face yoga. Wow. That's an incredible story. I mean, I completely relate to the feeling that you have, that you had where like the inside Mm -hmm. of you isn't a reflection of what your face is saying because I'm also really into fitness and I do competitive Latin ballroom dancing. And so I, I know what that feels like to have mm -hmm. muscle and tone from the sport that you do, but then to, to look at your face and say, but it doesn't seem to be yeah. the same. It's not a reflection of what I want people to see what's going on on the inside. Exactly. And, you know, we say, oh, you can't judge a book from the cover but still you want to you want to look good right you want to represent how you feel and um, that's that's why I think this method I call it you know face yoga method very revolutional because at first I wasn't expecting that the people's change internal change you know I just wanted to tell my face muscle that was the beginning of my journey but many people came to me like wow you're changing my life like what how I change your life like yeah I feel different more confident and then they feel more themselves mm -hmm. yeah i i also want to say that being a therapist and living with trauma myself and also working with people with trauma i it always just makes me feel so good when i hear stories like yours because i know that that was a tragic accident but what you did with it and how you made something like really fantastic come out of something that was so difficult. It's, I think that's just so inspirational. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I didn't want to give up because I was still mid thirties and you know, I felt like I had second chance to live when I didn't get killed in a car accident. And, uh, I just wanted to really enjoy more, but also I wanted to feel good and look good. No, good in a way that, um, you know, cover myself with makeup, but I wanted to feel more like who I feel inside. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds like liking yourself. It's so important to like yourself. It's, 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 it's hard for many, many, especially women. Um, but that's the first step I think for us to accept as, as we are. And then, um, and then from there, you can fall in love with yourself again. And that is so, sometimes, you know, we expect something, external things make us happy or make us feel like we have a love. But if you don't have love with yourself, if you don't feel comfortable or if you're not in love with yourself, I think it's a hard, especially right now, you know, the pandemic and everything, outside world is changing so dramatically and unknown it's so hard for us to feel centered. And that's why I combine meditation and also mantra and then all the internal um, exercises for people get the best result and external result too. Yeah. Now you have talked about the integrative aspects of this. Like you've just been touching on the fact that it's it's about working on the face muscles, but it's also about the mantras, what people say to themselves, mm -hmm. how they feel about themselves, mm -hmm. the messages they're telling themselves every day. So I know that, you know, a lot of people with chronic health problems, myself included, we choose not to participate in anti-aging invasive procedures or use Botox mm -hmm. and fillers and chemicals because we've got other sensitivities. Right. And I, you know, I can hear the voices of, well, how does this compare to those other techniques? And are you still going to get results if you do the face yoga method versus cosmetic procedures? And is it possible to use the face yoga method to empower people to still feel as though they're aging gracefully? 
Yes, I definitely think so. The, the couple of things I want to mention is that, you know, when you get procedures by somebody else, you know, um, some um, specialist, you're giving the power to them, right? So it's so after them. And then you are giving up your power you can, you, every single of us have. And by doing it, you know, you might feel okay at, after, right after surgery, let's say right after you get a procedures, but you're still not generating the energy from inside. So the face yoga method, when you do it, you are taking care of yourself. So self-care is such a big thing in uh, face yoga method, because when you are spending time, it can be even five minutes a day, you are, you feel like you're in control of your life because you are doing something for yourself. And then when you move the face muscles, you know, many of us do not understand that the stress can show so much on our forehead. When I look at people, I can tell, oh, she's stressed out. Why? Because of the way she carried the forehead, you know, and also the posture, how you carry your posture makes you stressful. And when you, you know, when you even feel happy inside, but when you frown, or when you tighten your shoulder, let's say for five minutes, you feel stressful because you're sending a hormone to your brain that you're not relaxed, you're stressed out. And I also use, I also use this um, example as an example too. You don't see people who are so depressed and have a good posture. I'm so depressed. And then the corner of the mouth, hi, I'm so depressed. And then relax forehead and I'm so depressed. When you do this for 17 seconds, your body started producing some chemical like, oh, I feel good for no reason. But same thing, if you are feeling okay and then you tighten and look down and tell yourself, I'm happy, I'm happy. It's very difficult because how you feel here and how you carry your posture is so different. And that's why you need to really think what you're using in your head, like saying something about yourself. If I tell you, hey, Casey, you don't look good today. You look so tired. Oh, what happened to you? You know, you're not happy right now. You don't look happy. You don't like me, right? Just to tell you, but we were doing it to us. Every day, many women look at themselves in a mirror like, oh, I have wrinkles. Oh, I don't look good. Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm so tired. So that's why, you know, be aware that word you use, even the thought you have, you have to change the mindset. And that's part of the training. You know, it's like a body. You can train your brain. You can train your mind. What word do you use so that you, you know, you start feeling different and seeing the changes too. And in terms of the procedures, I have had so many um, practitioners, face yoga practitioners, they have had, you know, Botox injections. And then they came to us because same reason, like you mentioned that they don't want to put any chemicals or any falling things in the body, but they were so afraid because they're so used to getting injections. And the first step is they have to decide, okay, I'm going to be in charge of my life. I'm not going to let other people just put something in a body. And then they make a firm decision and they have to say, okay, I'm going to do self-care, which is, you know, sometimes you have to really curve out over time, but okay, I take care of myself. So self-care. And then when they started doing exercises, they noticed that how the emotions and the thoughts affect their facial expressions. So they have to really see the big picture. Okay. What am I telling myself? Do I have to be nicer to me, to myself, saying better words to myself or even the thoughts. And then when they exercise, they notice that they actually do not need to get a Botox anymore. So that's a liberation. Like, wow, what was I doing before? Getting the injections, I don't need anymore. So physical changes, but also huge mental shift. I think that's what you know, makes a huge difference in people's life. And that's why my face yoga method, a slogan is change your face and change your life. Yeah. And uh, it's very possible because I've seen so many changes in so many people's life. Yeah. Wow. Fumiko, I like, I am just blown away. This is so incredible because I knew 
I had the book, I was doing the exercises, but I always wondered, you know, what was behind, there it is. I always <laughs> wonder what was behind the method because right. I haven't been involved in the community yet. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting started. But what you said about giving up your power, I feel like, you know, women, women and men want to look a certain way. And we mm -hmm. have these images and, you know, in the media and celebrities that just, you know, kind of fill our thoughts and minds with the way that we think we're supposed to look, unfortunately. Right. And when you do have procedures done to you, you, that is like a physical intervention, but the way you feel on the inside doesn't change until you change that. Now, like you say, it might be temporary and people, you know, they, they look at themselves in the mirror and they reflect that back and they say, oh, I like the way I look. I can't see my forehead wrinkles, but that is a short term effect because mm -hmm. the thoughts, the messages, the way that you see yourself, you can have a billion dollars and it doesn't make you happier. Right. You'll feel like you always have to do more to yeah. change your face and yeah right and that's that cycle energy. huh that's that yeah. cycle where yeah, cycle. people do more and more and more and more procedures mm -hmm. yeah and the more they feel separated from themselves right because you're giving up the power to somebody else and i don't want that happen to you know people especially those who already have trauma that just giving so much and also the media right now you know social media it's really we have to be careful because before when you think about it, all the you know, beauty, um, concept of beauty changed in history and culturally. And there was a time that full figure was considered beautiful. There was a time that the dark skin was considered beautiful. That's why I was getting a tan, getting suntan lotion. And there was a time that the uh, thin lips are considered beautiful. So it changes, you know, all the time. And if we were kind of fooled by that, that um, the beauty standard, I think we get so lost and then we can even do all the uh, applica use application and we can even change the skin color and tom of the skin. And we were, we have to be very, I think, careful to protect ourselves from that social media images and the messages we receive. Yeah. yeah and, and to also realize that what we see in the media isn't always real. And so it's a standard that's almost unattainable. Mm -hmm. for people when you're in a culture where you're you know in the spotlight all the time and you've got you know your crew of people who are constantly tending to you right there there's there's a lifestyle that comes with that there's there's an income level and then there's also this you know there's this uh you get into that cycle where i would imagine these people have to every day do something and then there's always more to do right and you said something really important to me a second ago about the body and so i'm really interested in different forms of psychotherapy that use the body for healing rather than just the mind because the body expresses our mental state mm -hmm. and what you said where you can look at someone's posture and that represents a mood or a feeling or stress but also the other piece that you mentioned is that when you hold your body tense, even if, you know, I just clench and I just tell myself I'm going to clench, that automatically sends a message of stress hormones yeah. through my body. And you were mentioning that when you're working with the method, with the face yoga method, that you're also teaching people to be more aware of the way that they hold their body because conscious or unconscious, and a lot of times it's unconscious, that does send a message of stress to the brain. Yeah, exactly. And if you are over mid 30, I think almost 85% of what you do, what you even think are autopilot. So you don't even think. So whatever you've been doing, you just do every day, same thing, same thing. So if you want to change something, you have to change that consciousness and you have to start paying attention, almost like a retraining your body from the beginning. Like, okay, how do I want to use my body? How do I want to smile? How do I want to, you know, present myself to myself so that you train yourself? And that's the beautiful thing because it doesn't matter how young and how old you are, you can do it because you have a muscle on your face and you have a muscle in your body. And then whatever you know you want to achieve i think you can achieve in the level that you decide to achieve and that's why 
my youngest student is eight and uh, he started doing a face yoga with his mom and his mom just loves him doing the poses because it makes him so happy because you know i would say check check your posture open your chest open your heart and that's such a big uh, message i have to tell my students over and over so he does it and then the oldest one is 93 years old so it's not like okay i'm old i'm not gonna do anything i'm just let you know whatever happened to me no this lady she wanted to look the best she wanted to be the best version of herself so why not do that yeah it doesn't matter how young how old you are you can still do it yeah, yeah so what you're saying is I think a lot of people when they there's this like clock that we have this mm -hmm. this uh social clock and a biological clock and when we hit a decade you know then i think there's these messages that people um turn on in their brains and i think 40 is is a big one for a lot of people yeah. i mean 50 and then 60 i'm not sure about 30s i think 30s you're still kind of you're just still kind of getting into your life flow but i think that sometimes people get trapped that it's too late or they have a lot of regret like oh i could have been you know moisturizing since i was 10 and i didn't realize this until i was you know 35 and how am i going to undo the aging process and i, I think what you're saying is that because we have muscles in our face and they are they're pliable and they're able to be worked and we're also able to always change no matter the age that we are the way that we think Right. And it doesn't matter what age you are. You can start now and you can make differences in your life and not get caught up in, oh, I, it's too late. Yeah, I totally love that. You know, when I was teaching at the university in Japan, my students and a college students, so <laughs> they're 21, like, oh, I'm getting old. <laughs> like, wow, it's just, you know, it's just a really, and you're still young, but in their head, 21 is, yes, older than 10 years old, for sure. I like this quote, you are the, you are the oldest you ever been, and then you will be the youngest you will ever be in your life or something. I think it's so beautiful because this is what we have right now. You know, whatever happened in our past, it's a past and it's gone. Yes, if you didn't moisturize your skin, if you, you know, get a tan on your face, and yeah, why not do something right now? And then you are the youngest you will ever be in your life. So think about how you can treat yourself. And um, I like the message um, so much. I forgot the uh, who was a uh, who said that quote, but I think it's just so spot on. Yeah, I, I I know what you're talking about. I saw I've seen a quote similar to that too, probably the same one. But it's so present focused because. Mm -hmm. In this moment right now, I am the youngest I'm ever going to be. But yet when we are in our moment, we think about how we wish that we were say 20 again. Oh, if I could only go back and be 20 again. And then pretty soon, you know, now another decade goes by and where we are in this moment is exactly where we want to be 10 years from now. Right. So that, that quote you're mentioning is just so present moment focused mm -hmm. right here, right now. And in this moment, this is what we have. Right. And I had the um, one student, uh, she posted, you know, she was still, young, she's still young. And she said, oh, I'm getting old and have all the wrinkles and all the things. And, and another member said that um, she has the friend whose daughter has a brain tumor. So the message was so strong. She said, okay, everybody wants to look young, but my friend's daughter has a brain tumor. She can't wait. She was so, she will be so happy if she can get old and get a wrinkle because she's not gonna live that long. Yeah. And it just hit me so hard because we think about a wrinkle and all the age spot and then, you know, we don't look good in this way, but how about, you know, beautiful things called a life. And so many people wants to even just get old to live that old so that they can see how it looks like. Yeah, when they get to that. Age. Yeah, wow, well, Fumiko, that was something I was going to ask you about. Like most people, I think in general, view wrinkles as a bad thing. And I wanted to know, what do you feel about wrinkles? And I think you just, you just said it. <laughs> yeah, well, do, of course, you know, I want to have a good skin, but 
I think ultimately what I want to have is a life that I felt like, wow, my life was good. Enjoy. And I enjoy it fully. And, you know, in the, the last, like the last moment in my life, I don't think I would say like, oh, I wish I had less wrinkle. No, it doesn't matter. Do I have to worry about that? No. What I want to do is I want to have happy life. And that's why I think it's a big picture. How you want to live. It doesn't matter the wrinkle. Yes, it presents, you know, who you are, the way you carry your facial expressions. But I rather to have happy, wrinkly face than no wrinkle and unhappy life. So that's what I see it. And also wrinkles are just the presenting how you smile in your life, how you spend your life. And if you have this, of course, you probably you're not a happy person. But if you have a wrinkle right here and a big smile, go for it. I think it's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and your, your point that you made about not everybody gets to live long enough to have wrinkles. Yeah. And those wrinkles are a reflection of a life that's also been lived. I, I love that spiritually to accept that. I just know that it's really difficult because we, you know, we have such a, a negative sense of wrinkling and aging um, in society that we it's really ingrained in us. And mm -hmm. I really like that you call, instead of anti-aging, you use the term pro-aging. Can you, yeah. can you describe that a little bit more for me? Yes. So anti-aging, you know, it's anti, it's such a negative connotation to it. It's almost like you're resisting and you have to stop the process. But the reality is that we can't. And pro-aging is more like accepting what it is. It's not like giving up, but you are accepting what's happening and then do the best, whatever you can to bring the best out of you. So that's why, you know, as much as I talk about the importance of you know, emotions and the feelings and the mindset, but yes, the face yoga method does actually do exercises on the face so that you can promote the useful look. And when you feel good, when you look good, your life starts changing because you see things differently and then you use our work differently. And then when you exercise the muscles, even though, you know, um, the facial muscles are a little bit different from the body muscle. They're much smaller. They are much more intricate because they need to use, uh, they need to express the emotions on their face. It's not like showing emotions here. You know, right here, there's so many muscles, almost over 60 muscles on the face and neck. It's quite a lot. And then when you do the exercises in the right way, you can even create the right smile. Instead of smiling like this, you can create the smile you want to create. Instead of showing the uh, gummy, you know, many people want to do surgery because they don't like to smile because they are worrying about showing the gummy. But when they change the way they smile, they can smile more with confidence. And that's also changes the mindset. That's why it doesn't matter even you are 60 years old. You create the new smile and you get a confidence. And that's a pro-aging because you appreciate and accept the fact that you are getting old, but you are not giving up what you can and then do the best and create the best version of yourself doing self through self-care and through face of the method exercises. Mm -hmm. So Fumiko, you've talked about that there's the, the thoughts, the mantras. Um, how else would you say that the face yoga method is whole body and that it incorporates the mind, body, and the spirit? And would you, would you even consider the face yoga method an integrative and holistic approach? Yes, that's, that's you know, a face yoga method is not exercise, it's a lifestyle. So what does it mean lifestyle? I tell people that uh, when you wake up in the morning, you know, don't get out of bed until you convince yourself that you you are today is the happiest day of your life. Like you have to say, you have to say it because the way you start this, the way you start your day, set the tone for your entire day. And then what you put in your body represent who you are. You know, what you eat is who you are. The saying says that too. So be conscious of how you have food, how you put in your body, and then exercise your um, mind that you say things, you know, nice things to yourself or think nice things to yourself and then exercise your body 
and then face using that face yoga method of pauses. And then before you go to bed, have a nice thought and say that you had the best day of your life. And then when you're sleeping, whatever you said to yourself, the very last thoughts you have reflect how you sleep. And when you wake up in the morning, the same thing. So it's a cycle. And uh, that's why I believe that face yoga is a, a holistic approach to your life. And it's not an exercise. It's a, um, much bigger than just moving your face muscles. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and what you said about the last thought, I think a lot of us don't realize that when we sleep, we also clench. We also tighten. You know, yeah. when we're stressed while we're sleeping, we can, you know, just uh, squeeze our eyes and yes. hold. Or here, go to bed. Eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Frown even yeah. when we're sleeping so that yeah. what you are thinking and how you calm yourself before you fall asleep. Mm -hmm is also a really important part. It's so important. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen a lot about, you know, oh, it's all about the way you sleep. You know, make sure you sleep. There's everything out there. Make sure you sleep on your back because, you know, you don't want to squish your face while yeah, you're sleeping. Yeah, like this. this. What, do you, what do you think about that? How do you sleep at night? Do you sleep on your back, on your side? or do you? I train myself. Back? Yeah, that's actually, it's interesting, Casey. That's one of the things I tell people. You know, I talk about lots of... Uh, unconscious habits, aging habits, because people do all the things they don't know. And then they wake up in the morning and go, why I look like this? Yes. If you sleep on a side, if you see vertical lines, probably you slept on your side. Yeah. And then when you see vertical lines in the morning, you know, you want to change the habit. So I try to sleep on the back, how to sleep on your back, relax your body. You know, you want to relax your lower back and then start with this. And of course, if you sleep on a side middle of the night, that's okay too, because big picture is you want to have a good life. So don't get stressed out because you can't sleep on your back. It is okay, but there's a way you can change. You know, if you see vertical line, why not do some face exercises and just counter whatever happened when you're sleeping on your side. Did that make sense? Yeah. yeah, I get it. Yeah, because you don't want to disrupt your quality of sleep. Exactly. You also don't want to be stressed about not doing something that you tell yourself you want to do. Like that's exactly. the message I keep hearing from you really loud and clear that everything you do, if you're going to do it, remember it's in the big picture of quality life, not to add yeah. more stress. Yeah, you want to be happy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I come from a really strong history of trauma. And so I've spent my entire life trying to undo that fight or flight response, this mm -hmm. reaction that I get to little things that happen around me that are no threat whatsoever, but my body easily goes into a stress response. And so it's very easy for me to have a task and I'm also a really hardcore perfectionist. So mm -hmm. if I have a task that I set my mind to and then I don't do it, then I have stress that I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what you said a lot of is that when you commit to these lifestyle changes, you know, and you say, oh, yeah, I want to try to sleep on my back. Then if you don't sleep on your back, you don't beat yourself up the next yeah. morning because that causes stress. Then exactly. You do lifestyle things to counter it. Right. You say more exercises better thoughts. There's, there's always a balance to give and take mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and a big picture, you know, why you are doing this. It's not because the purpose is sleep on the back. No, because you want to have a good life, be happy. Yeah. And I always say the five things in the face yoga. First one is awareness. So be aware how you do things, what you're eating, how you're eating, what's your thoughts are. So when you are aware, so, um, I'm sorry, re, um, the first one is recognize. You want to recognize, you realize, and then you want to release attention. If you have a tension on your body or face, release it. If you have some tension or stress in your head, release it. And the third one is you need to rebuild. You want to rebuild that right posture, rebuild the muscles right way. And then you want to rebuild your positive mindset. And then you want to relax because if you're obsessed with these three, right? I have to do this after yeah, you get stressed out. It defeat the purpose of all of these and you have to relax. That's a fourth R and then you want to repeat. So five R uh, main face yoga method message. Yeah. So don't get four, you know, you want to relax. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Um, Fumiko, would you demonstrate some face yoga exercises for us? Yes, sure. So since we talked about lots of things, you know, mind and the body connection, how about one pose is called instant pick me up. And I want to show you quickly how the face yoga can change your mind, not mindset. I'm sorry. Let's start from the physical changes. Mm -hmm. So this is a famographic image picture I took. So doing one pose, it's not three minutes, it's not 30 minutes, only 30 seconds will improve blood circulation massively. So the blue is the coolest, right? And the yellow, uh, orange and red is the hottest. So temperature change after 30 seconds, it's so quick. And that means more nutrient, more oxygen to the skin, that's, that gives more you know, nice skin too. And speed up um, skin's turnover. So this is the physical changes. And then the mental changes, this pose, the instant pick me up, literally it picks you up instantly, but also it lift up your droopiness. You know, when we started seeing droopiness on the eye area, yeah, we look kind of tired and sleeping. We want to lift up the forehead, right? And then this pose also requires, you have a good posture, you have to have a good posture. You can't lift this forehead up with this tight shoulder. So I tell people, okay, chest open, heart open, and lift up forehead. But when you lift up forehead, the forehead muscle is connected to other part of the face. So when you lift this up, you're lifting the baseline too. Okay, so we do this. And then when you do that, I like to say mantra like, oh, I'm so beautiful. I'm very happy. My life is amazing. I'm healthy. And because you have a good posture, chest open, heart open, it's easier for your mind or brain to accept that mantra. So let's do this one together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's start. Good posture is important. The top of the head and center of your forehead. Okay. And the peak of your nose chin, the collarbone, the center of the collarbone, sternum, belly button, tailbone, straight line. We keep this posture, very important, okay? And then here, the center of your collarbone and edge of your shoulders, try to push down your shoulder blades. Try to push down the shoulder blades. Beautiful, okay? So, Put the thumbs on top of the head, keep the nice posture throughout the pose and the shoulder relax, chest open, heart open. Okay, it's important to have a big, nice whoo, release from the chest. Four fingers on your forehead and when you do that, make sure you're lifting the area you want to lift. So if you have a droopiness right here, you can put the fingers there and the lift up. And breathe in. Shoulder relax. I can see your shoulders. Oh, yeah. yeah, beautiful. Okay, lift your forehead up. Lift chin up slightly and breathe in love. And palms on the side of the face and the side of your neck. Beautiful. Feel you. This is you. And the side of your chest and the side of your body. Beautiful. Okay, let's do two more. Thumbs on top of the head and shoulder relax and lift the forehead up. And if you have 11 line, which you don't, but people who have 11 line, they can do even smooth this up, B shape. Lift this up, chin slightly up and breathe in. When you cannot breathe in anymore, palms the side of the face, inside of the neck and I breathe out. Beautiful, okay, last one, breathe in. Let's do with eyes closed. And I want to say some of the affirmations and I want you to say it or you can just say it in your, in your heart. Breathe in, pull your forehead up. And I love myself. I'm beautiful. The palms the side of your face. I'm perfect. My life is perfect. I'm palms up on your thighs, keep your eyes closed and then feel the lifting sensation you just created. 
feel the sensation you created, the space you created on your heart. And when you're ready, breathe in again from your nose and open your eyes and smile. How do you feel? Felt really good. Yeah. It's, I, well, it, I noticed that, of course, the first round, my shoulders were way up. Mm -hmm. Yep, you were tightening. Yep, yep I was going okay. way up. Yep. So you have to keep shoulder down, right? Make a neck nice and long. Yep, beautiful. And when you lift, imagine that you're lifting entire forehead and also the face line. That's why you want to really be aware how you're lifting. And if you have 11 line, this is so good lift. And then chest open, heart open. You know, because you do dance, so you know that how important to keep a posture, right? And then neck nice and long. And then when I say touch your side, you know, feel you, this is you. So feel the love and hi, I'm beautiful. Hello, I love myself. We have to wake up our senses too. So that's what we do. And then the end, when you close eyes, just feel the space you created and the feel the muscle you lifted. And that extra seconds, you know, you take it so worth it because you're giving time yourself and then you're really healing who you are from inside. That's what I think. And the people sometimes, like I said earlier, um, some women cannot do this because it's so painful for them. Yeah. to even say, I love my life, or even chest open physically, it's so hard for them because they're so used to carrying a stress on the shoulder and everything's connected right from here. And if you carry the tension, it's hard on the lower back too. For sure. So you open up yourself. So yeah. that's and right. I, and, I, and I agree with what you're saying that it can be really hard to say you love yourself. It can be even hard to touch your own body. Oh. Yeah. You know, just to, to sense your own body. So mm -hmm. going slow and just, you yeah. know, lots of love and patience with the process. If it's uncomfortable, that's part of right. being more comfortable. Yeah. With and we I've do that. There. You know, we touch a kid's face or even dog. I have a dog, rescue dog, and I touch her and I tell her, oh, it's so pretty. But we don't do it to ourselves. We say, ugh, wrinkle, ugh. Yeah. You know, we, you know, treat us as if it's not something beautiful. So that's why we need to really think about, you know, how are you doing? But hello, good morning. Hello, good morning, me. And I put the sunscreen, the sun, you know, a skincare um, cream and then say, hello, beautiful. And when you do this in the morning, Casey, I guarantee you feel different entire day. And then people treat you differently because you look so happy. And then you know, people treat you accordingly. And then you feel like, wow, my day was so good. And that's when you started changing your life. Yeah. Okay. Good. So are you ready for next pose? I'm ready. Okay. So next pose, um, we have a big muscle, sternocloidal mastoid right here, connected back of the head and a collarbone, you know, right here, sternum. And then also platysma, the big muscle right here. So we are going to tone the face line and this is a part that we started seeing some sign of aging if you don't do anything like a double chain or droopiness right here. So I want you to feel that um, skin first, a muscle first. Can you put your fingers on the collarbone? Yep. Okay. And then can you turn your head to one side? Do you feel that? That's some slight movement on the neck. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, good. And turn to the other side. Turn to the other side. Yep. Good. Good. So that's a muscle we're going to use. Okay. And in many of us, especially these days, we tend to look down, looking at the phone. And when you look down, by looking down almost 45 degree angle, I've seen people between these a lot. That's 45 pounds to 60 pounds of weight you're carrying on your neck. It's a quite a lot. And when you have a tightness right here, it makes, you know, give you a headache and also you level mind. So we want to change that too. So interlace your fingers in front of you, okay? And push your hands away from you so that you're really stretching between the shoulder blades. And the neck nice and long, don't tighten your neck. Push down. So do you feel nice sensation? You're separating your shoulder blades? Definitely. Okay, good. Breathe in and push a little bit more. Push a little bit more, shoulder down. And breathe in and move your hand slightly to the left. Yep, good. 
and then your chin to the right. Good, beautiful. And pucker your mouth slightly as if you're kissing somebody mm, and feel the sensation on the neck. Swan neck, the name of the pose. Going back to center and other side, move your arms and now you're really releasing attention from here and then chin up 45 degrees so you feel a nice sensation beautiful on the side of the neck and then back your mouth one two three four five back to center and then smile Woo. how do you feel i feel the um it's it's engaging my entire body and i had to think about also relaxing my face mm -hmm. while i was doing it you know yeah. it's so easy for me to uh go up up and my forehead goes up <laughs> yeah that that's why you want to train and there's so many other poses too you know you can train your forehead like i said it's like a body and a muscle memory so when you start training and when you start paying attention you catch yourself like oops i'm tightening my shoulder again so every time you go bathroom you can do this pose and you turn your neck and every time you see yourself in a mirror throughout the day, you just do like, ah, wonderful. Yeah. And then you feel different. Yeah. All right. So these are two poses um, you can try and then um, pay attention to your posture. Like I said earlier, posture is so important. How to carry yourself affect how you feel inside. And then another thing is relax, relaxing your forehead, but also try to feel, you know, love inside and then create the space and a time for yourself so that you can be the best version of yourself. Yes. So. Yes. Thank you so much, Fumiko. And for people who are interested in what's available on in social media, what's available as far as groups, other ways if people want to get more involved. Um, in communities, what's available out there? Yeah, so I have a lots of online programs. And when you go faceyogamethod.com, my website, um, the jump starts, you know, jump starts are the one that target part or, you know, certain part of the face. And 28 days, you just target on the forehead. What second jump start is eye area or cheek, nasal labial. So the area you really want to tone, you can buy jump start. And then we just started, it's called a six week face toning boot camp, which is great. Six weeks, you know, you just cover entire face. Not only that, you know, mindset and lifestyle. Every single day you get some kind of bonuses, which is, you know, even mantra or how to put that yogurt on your face, which I do instead of, you know, store bought mask, I put yogurt on my face mm -hmm. to make my skin softer. And then, um, digital detox which i think it's so beneficial for many of us don't look at your device for 20 minutes or sometimes a whole week and no, i'm sorry um half a day and i tell you all the things so people don't need to even think about just follow the program which is good and also i certify teachers so i have over 600 certified teachers worldwide wow and then they're really going deep you know not just the exercises but mindset and then all the things um they get trained to be a teacher and spread this message to the people yeah so go to a face yoga method.com and also i have a book casey have a book right so i have a book i have ebook and uh, now translated into spanish and then um i have all the blogs um all the free contents and the free uh poses you can get downloaded from that website too yeah, and I noticed you've got a lot of content on your YouTube channel as well. Yeah, there are lots of poses. So you can try. Yeah. Wow, I'm excited. Know. There's a little bit of something for everyone. People can get the book. They can start working on things at home. Mm -hmm. If they want to join the community, they can. If they want to subscribe and have, um, you know, individual, like, uh, lessons sent to them, there's those options. It sounds like there's something for everyone. Yes. So try. And then also homemade remedies. I make my own cream, body cream and a face cream and a scrub and a spray. So there's lots of things, you know, it's fun. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you okay. so much. Fumiko, I'm so inspired. I just have really enjoyed our time together. Thank you for, you know, reminding me that aging is pro aging is a lifestyle. 
And I love the idea of loving myself better while I am becoming more beautiful right. <laughs> inside and out. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I had so much fun too. So thank you, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye.